Hi. All right. So I want to talk to you today about why you might want to run EMR on EKS. So besides starting with the same first letter and having uh, the rest of the letter be suspiciously close in the alphabet, what else makes EMR and EKS go well together? Well, one of the big reasons is if you already have an EKS cluster and you have a big data pipeline on the side, you probably want to run that big data pipeline on your EKS cluster, right? You don't want this awkward big data pipeline where you have to pick EC2 instances or something like that, right? So if you have an EKS cluster already, and regardless of whether it's a Spark pipeline or an EMR pipeline on the side, you probably want to move that over to EKS at some point because you've already got EKS, you've already got services and deployments running there. And so you want to be able to make use of that Kubernetes cluster to, to the greatest extent, right? So that's one of the big reasons is consolidating resources, right? Just take everything, move it over there, and you can manage and monitor your resources in one centralized place and make use of that awesome Kubernetes cluster. The other reason you probably want to do this is the easy deployment, right? So I wasn't familiar with EMR and EKS. I just came back to the EMR team a few months ago. So I sat down and I gave it a try. And within a couple minutes, I'd submitted my first job to the EMR on EKS API. And in a second, it was up and running on the EKS cluster. Uh, I was a little blown away at just how easy it was. I didn't expect it to be that easy. So once the namespaces were set up on EKS, and once you connect a virtual cluster to that EKS, cluster, you're good to go, which is really awesome. And there's fast spin up time too, right? As soon as I submitted that job, it started spinning up the driver and the executors on the Kubernetes cluster. So that's one of the big things here is that easy deployment. If you've ever deployed Spark on Kubernetes, there's a few more steps in order to do that, right? You have to build a Spark Docker container for the specific version of Spark that you want. You have to build your application container. Then you have to submit that job to the cluster. You could use Spark Submit, but then you need direct network access to that cluster, which is not always something you might have. So then you probably have to build an API middleware um, that submits the job to the cluster for you. You also probably have to have some sort of like pod running on the cluster that can take that job, submit it to the cluster and do all that kind of stuff. And that doesn't even start to talk about logs. Logs, you need logs right? You're running Spark jobs, you probably want logs. So that's one of the other things you have to figure out where to store those logs. Do you store them on the cluster? Do you store them in S3? Then you need to spin up a Spark history server. So that also has to be running on the cluster so you can view those logs after the job terminates, right? So all of a sudden, instead of just running a single API command, you are building Docker containers, you're hosting them in container repositories, you're deploying pods. And yes, there's a lot of things on Kubernetes to make this easy. There's an entire repository of Helm charts to make this easy for you. But I would rather focus on my awesome, awesome, awesome Spark code than deploying Docker containers personally. So that's one of the big things is EMR takes care of building those containers for you. It takes care of submitting those jobs to the EKS cluster. It takes care of monitoring those jobs and saving the output of those jobs, saving the logs of those jobs somewhere. And when the job is done, you just, at the click of a button right there, you can spin up a, a Spark history server. So whether the job is currently running or whether it's finished, you spin that up and you instantly have access to the logs. So that's one of the big things. It's just, it's so easy, right? Um, and you can also run multiple versions. It's You just actually switch this um, release label right here from EMR 5.32 to EMR 6.2, and you've gone from Spark 2.4 to Spark 3, right? So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, with EKS, you can also run serverless with Fargate. So if you just want to you know, have it up, serverless uh, Fargate nodes provisioned for you, awesome. That's one way to do it. So that's, that's one of the other big benefits. It's just the deployment mode is a lot easier. One other thing on the deployment mode too, with EMR and EC2, it's a cluster centric model. So you spin up a cluster, it's got a set of EC2 instances in it. It can auto scale, of course, uh, which is which is awesome. But um, you, know, you, you may or may not be fully utilizing that cluster. There's a lot of work that's been done into making sure that the, those clusters can auto scale. But if you're running jobs throughout the day, you might not always be using that those resources. Also, the permissions on that cluster are shared, right? And so you have one role that's shared between all the jobs that are running in that cluster. With EMR on EKS, it's a job-centric deployment model. So you run your job, you can specify the Spark version with your job, you can specify the specific permissions that your job gets, and that job uh, pulls resources from that Kubernetes cluster specific to what that job actually needs. So you're a lot more efficient with your runtime as well. Speaking of runtimes, the other awesome thing about EMR is there's uh, performance improvements in EMR that make it run better. Uh, whether on EC2 or Kubernetes, uh, there's a lot of improvements there that we've made to the Spark runtime to just make those jobs run faster. So that's a few reasons. So let me do a quick recap. One, 
performance. Uh, that's an easy win to, to do on EMR and EKS. You can uh, run those jobs and they'll just run faster for you. The other one is simplicity. It's really easy to get started. You just run a, a single API command and you can submit jobs to your EMR and EKS cluster and you're done. You don't have to worry about a whole bunch of other stuff. And then finally, consolidation, right? Cost and consolidation, which is always on top of everybody's mind. If you run EMR and EKS, you're paying just for the job runtime. You're making the most efficient use of the resources that you have possible. And and you can consolidate all your resources in one place. So that's a quick video on why you might want to run EMR and EKS. I'll be doing a few more of these. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye.